year three, welcome to English Today. Okay, before we begin, I've got a little bit of a retrieval practice for you. So in the last chapter, we know that Hamlet requested a private audience, that means a meeting with the king. But we don't know what they said to each other. But after this meeting, Tulak was released. Mm. So what I'd like you to do is write what you think Hamlet and the king discussed. But what I want you to remember as well, because you're writing what somebody has said, I need to use speech in uh, when you're punctuating your sentences. So, for example, this is my version. Your Majesty, thank you for meeting with me, said Hamlet apprehensively. What? You can talk? exclaimed the king in surprise. Now I want you to think about what you would like to write there. So pause the video now and have a go at that for me. Okay, welcome back. So your lesson today, year three. Your learning objective today is to retrieve information from the text, just like we've been doing all week. So to be successful at this, you need to be able to read a question carefully to pick out the key words, scan a text to locate the key words, use the reading before and reading after strategies that we've taught, I've taught you, and copy down exact quotes from the text. I know today you're going to be really successful at this. Okay, so let's have a just a quick recap on what Rex the Retriever does. He helps us remember to retrieve and record information and identify key details from fiction and non-fiction texts. This means he's there to help you find the key pieces of information within the text you're reading. He helps you to do this by looking through the text for a specific answer. With Rex Retrieval questions, the answer you're looking for is always in the text. Remember, you've just got to find it and pull it out. <laughs> Excellent. So remember, he might ask you things like, what is the name of the main character? Which part of the text tells you? When and where is this story set? How do you know? How does the main character behave, speak or look? What do you think is happening in this part of the story? Who is the, te who is the telling? <laughs> who is telling the story? And how do you know? Okay, so you now are very, very familiar with these types of questions. You will know now when you get this as um, a question maybe in an assessment, you'll be like, yes, I know what that's asking me to do. It's asking me to retrieve, to pull something out of the text, because these are the type of retrieval questions. Okay, we've got two vocabulary checks first before you, I'm going to model um, how to answer one of the questions and then you're going to write your own. Okay, so disembark, okay, that's a verb. Now they all disembarked from the SS indescribable. So when you disembark something, you're leaving a ship, an aircraft or a train. So when you come off an aeroplane, if you have been on one, you have to disembark the aircraft. If you're coming off the train, you have to disembark the carriage. And if you're coming off a ship, you're disembarking the ship. It's got three syllables in, disembark, okay. When they arrived in Birmingham, they disembarked the train. So the synonyms are get off, leave, go, detrain, deplane. So you could be when they arrived in Birmingham, they got off the train. When they arrived in Birmingham, they left the train. OK, now atonyms are embark, which means you're getting onto something, boarded or stay on. So often that when you're going on an aeroplane, they'll often ask you to board the plane. OK. And then the other one, oh, I like this word, scrupulous. And scrupulous is an adjective. He supervised the unloading of the enormous equipment with, a, with scrupulous care. Careful, so sorry, the definition is careful, thorough, attentive to detail. It's got three syllables, scrupulous. I am scrupulous in my approach to painting. That means I'm careful, thoughtful and attentive to detail. So synonyms um, that I mean the same as scrupulous are careful, meticulous, I really like that word meticulous, thorough and attentive. Now atonyms, so the opposite to that word are careless, slapdash and unscrupulous. So for example, I am careful in my approach to painting, I'm meticulous in my approach to painting, or you could be talking about somebody else. Oh, they are slapdash in their approach to painting. Okay, so today we're going to read through this. Oh, I've realised I 
I <laughs> forgot to animate one of my ticks there, but never mind. Um, we're going to read through this part together, answer the questions together, and then you are going to go off and read the text yourself and answer some questions. So I get to read to you a little bit today. So that's good. Okay. According to the text, what was the name of the boat that the firework makers had arrived on? So the keys that we're looking these the key words that we're looking for there are boat and firework makers. Okay. So in this um, in the text here, we're going to be looking for firework makers, which I can see right at the top, the invited firework makers. Uh, but if I look, arrive the next day. Mm, that doesn't tell me about the boat, so I need to look further down. So I need to think about arrived on. Ah, and then I notice this word, disembark, that we've just spoken about. And what does disembark mean? To get off a ship, a plane or a train. They disembark, so that is giving me a really big clue there. <gasps> they disembark from the SS Indescribable. <gasps> what was the name of the boat it tells me there the ss indescribable that is the name of the ship that they got off or the boat now the next one is to tick one box in each row to show whether the statement is true or false and i've given you the first one by accident <laughs> okay so we have the first one dr puffin flashed was from heidelberg Okay, so I'm going to look for those words in my text. Okay, there's Dr. Puff and Flash, and then Heidelberg. So was it true that he was from Heidelberg? Yes, it was true that he was from Heidelberg. The next question is asking me, his rocket reached 1,000 feet high. So I'm looking for 1,000 feet, okay? So I'm going to go back to the area that I was just looking at, and I'm going to look for 1,000 feet. Hmm. But when I look, I don't find 1,000 feet. I find 2,000 feet. So if I read around, exploded at the height of 2,000 feet, hmm, his rocket reached 1,000 feet high. Well, it did, but it actually went up even further. So I'm going to say that, but it's false because it goes even further. Now, the last one, his rocket formed the shape of a frankfurter. Do you know what a frankfurter is? It's a German sausage. So that is what we're looking for. A frankfurter sausage. Okay. Oh, gigantic frankfurter sausage. Can you see that in the text there? I've underlined it to help me. So now I need to read around. Okay. His firework form, formed the shape of a frankfurter. Uh, um, his rocket, which exploded at the height of 2,000 feet, into the shape of a giant frankfurter so sausage. Is that true or false? It's true. Okay, now the last question, according to the text, what was the song that played during Dr. Puffelschnack Flash's firework display? Hmm. So I need to look for the word played. That is what's going to be the key there. I wonder if you can spot that now. Hmm. Word played. I'm going to underline it in here though. Played. Hmm, played. He invented, played. Uh oh, I can see it there. Can you see it too? There's a name of the song. Okay, the name of the song is The Ride of the Valkyries. Okay, so that is what was played. The song that was played was The Ride of the Valkyries. Okay, then now you are going to have a go at reading this part of the text. It's on your worksheet already. And then you're going to answer these questions, okay? So you have four questions to answer. You have um, a tick one, you have a true or false, you have to find something, and then you need to write down three exact quotes, okay? So children, pause the video now, Go and have a go at doing that and come back when you're finished. Okay, welcome back to the last part of your lesson now. So just summing up then, what does Rex Retriever help you to do? And what sort of questions might he ask? And how can you make sure you get full marks on the Rex Retriever questions? So just, I don't want you to write anything down about this because we've done this a few times this week. This is just to keep your mind ticking over. What does he help you to do? What sort of questions might he ask? And how can you make sure you get full 
marks. Have a think about those questions, talk to the person in the room with you, and then children, you are finished for the morning with English. I'm really looking forward to seeing you in a week's time, and you take care, and I will see you very soon. Take care now. Bye.